What's up? What's up? Welcome, everybody, um, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. And you know how we do every time. Grab your vices. Let's chill out and get straight to it. Um, this is episode number nine with Straightforward with Miss B, along with my guest co host, AG. What's up, man? What's going on, girl? How you been doing? I've been doing good, man. It's just been a lot going on this week. <laughs> Let's get to the business. <laughs> Let's get this shit going. Cracking. Let's get um, it cracking. Oh gosh. Anyway, um, as far as the week, how how your how was your week? How was your week? Oh, uh, long. Did a lot of traveling. Went out of town this this week. I had to take my my mother and grandmother to a funeral. Oh okay. All right. And where was the funeral? Oh, uh, we had to um Brooksville, Florida. Right out, outside of Tampa, about 30 minutes from Tampa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never heard of Brooksville. Hey, don't go. <laughs> Pass through, but don't stop. <laughs> Pass through, but don't stop. The same way they say about going through Mississippi, like, keep going. <laughs> but you ain't going to miss nothing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's don't... the reason why I said, you don't, don't miss nothing. Right, right. You ain't got nothing. Oh my God, the country! I love the country. Well, not all the time. It is. It is can be very boring in the country. No, nah, I used to tell my folks I am take me over somebody else's house and leave me because I, I ain't doing the country. Oh gosh! Oh God! I'm trying to get the red dirt out of my shoes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I had to wipe my damn shoes up yesterday. Oh no. Dirt. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe when you get older, you might feel like retiring and, and get you a little piece of land out in the country. Not that country. <laughs> <laughs> There's another country that would not be that one. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Somewhere outside of Birmingham, maybe. I'm sure, shoot, there's a lot of country yeah. places in Birmingham. I mean, not in Birmingham, but like Alabama in general. I mean, it'd be all right if maybe if I go to the yeah, I wasn't in no neighborhood where people was, mm-hmm. you know. We'll go over to uh, my cousin's house to visit, I mean, you know, for repass and stuff, after repass and stuff like that, because I went for a funeral. Mm-hmm. But as far as, I didn't really see any of us, any of us down there other than at the funeral, you know. Oh, wow. And, and I'm, and I'm, Mm-hmm. I'm used to seeing us everywhere I go, somewhere, damn near. But when when us is missing, I don't feel comfortable. I feel right. Yeah, yeah. We we don't need you to be down there getting in no trouble. No, uh, not with them boys. Not with them boys. <laughs> not with them good old boys. The, right. That's that, that's where they at. They in the country. Them the real one. They still got the Trump and pin signs out. They never took them down. <laughs> oh my God! And the Confederate flags. I ain't seen no of them, but I see Trump still alive. Oh my God! Oh I'm my talking God! About mm. Fresh, like they finna run in November. Like he campaigning right now. <laughs> they uh, that shit out. He might be campaigning again. Let him you tell you. This shit still say twenty twenty. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> They keep it. They keep it hope alive. Did tell me about it. Uh, well, my we- about it. right. Well, my weekend was uh <clears throat> a lot going on. Seemed like it was just a lot going on this week for some reason. But I did get the opportunity to uh celebrate a friend's birthday. It just seemed like everybody's birthday is coming up here soon. Um, but yeah, so celebrated with Ra, hung out with friends, went out to have some Mexican, some margaritas, and that was pretty, that was pretty good. Um, outside of that, let me see, uh, had, you know, spoke with a friend of mine out of, uh, out of Texas, out of Houston, um, with a, you know, some business propositions, talking about making some money. So I'm always down for that, making some money. I love when my friends call me about money. Oh, yeah, you got to make the money moves. Right, exactly. And this particular friend of mine, we've been friends for, for shoot, a long time since my Alabama State days. Uh, we actually met 
Um, we actually met in an online chat room. We used to be like in a hip-hop rap chat room, and we used to be spin raps. Spin raps to each other. <laughs> what was your rap name? Oh, my God, my rap name. Oh, that is a, that's a fun fact, everybody. I thought I was going to become a rapper <laughs> back in the, in the 90s. Um, my rap name was Black Widow. Was who? Black Widow. Oh, my God. B-L-A-K-W-I-D-O-E. Black Widow. Oh, that was the shit, man. <laughs> I thought I was on my way. For real. <laughs> yeah, I was going to be the next somebody. Lil' Kim. And I got some stories about uh, some some things. Boxy Brown back then. Mm -hmm. Lil' Kim it had to be. Yeah, some things, you guys. I, I am. I started writing a book, so, you know. Some little details about my life I probably will not share on the podcast, but it'll definitely be definitely be in my my memoir. That's for sure. <laughs> I have some interesting interesting stories for real. I have an interesting story with uh too short. Um, as far as you know, like I said, my little rap career that I was trying to do. So that can't wait for people to hear that story. Huh? He called your name one of the freaky tears. <laughs> <laughs> no, you that you know I wasn't that type. <laughs> you know I wasn't. I wasn't on that. I was a little. I was on a little more on the hard side. You know the tomboy is hard side, but no. Damn <laughs> mess. <laughs> right, I bet D B. Her name would be. We had at the university. <laughs> I be I be thinking about that sometime. Remember, like you know, like the groupies and stuff like that. I'm sure, like Too Short, um, Luke from Miami used to have all the girls dancing with him on stage. Like these are people, grandparents now. <laughs> Right, take a look. You see them? I used to be a look dancer. So <laughs> right. I used to dance with Hammer. Right. <laughs> like, like, hey. What's the name of that? You know, what the Fly Girls? What they was on? Who the uh, Fly Girls? They was on um in Living Color, Living right? Color, yeah. Ooh, I was a Fly Girl. Yeah, I was a Fly Girl <laughs> dancer. I did some work with Luke. I went on the road with Luke, shaking hey, my ass. Steady. That was all. That was thirty years ago. Thirty, forty years ago. God damn. That's a long yeah. time. That's a long time. But anyway, so today we want to kind of talk about a little bit more serious. Of course, I'm sure at some point we will probably throw some humor, <laughs> as we always do, in the topics. Um, Georgia. Georgia has passed a bill that is going to um, allow, um, you know, the citizens of Georgia to carry concealed guns without a license. And I thought that was so interesting because I think we recently talked about that um, during the Young Dolph um, murder um, discussions that Memphis had a similar law, if not the same law, um, in place. And I know that... Uh, Backstage, we kind of had some discussions about yeah, Birmingham, Alabama, Alabama as well. Yeah, Alabama. Yeah, we got it sitting on the governor's desk ready to be signed. You think any of that stuff got to do with that? That Amon guy down there with them guys killed him? You know, that's a good point. That I didn't think of. At first, I was thinking about, well, where, why all of a sudden this this stuff is is going on? I know that you know they are um, building more prisons, so they need to have people inside of those prisons. Um, and what better way to do that than you know implement these new laws, especially around guns and. Uh, you know, make it kind of easy for people to get themselves caught up in a situation, a legal or criminal situation, 
you know, with these type of guns. But yeah, the the Amar, uh, what is it? What was his last name? Yes, I don't, I don't know. I forget. I don't want to say no. Yeah, I don't. We don't want to mess it up. Say no Mind you guys, we are we're kind of old. <laughs> we're kind of old, so <laughs> blame it on our minds and not right. Blame it on our minds, not our hearts for sure. But yeah, you do. You definitely made a good point there. It may, oh, yeah, it may have gone. something to to do with that. I don't know, cause it got to be, it got to be a motive, and somebody got to be getting paid. Right. So why would you come up with that law in this day and time? Exactly. I didn't. I didn't understand. I know that it sounds like the people that make guns, the manufacturers of guns, it sounds like it's going to be a huge, probably spike in you know profits there. Um, as far as people purchasing guns now that they don't have a permit, that may be that make may make people go out. You so know, do you think it's gonna be a rise in gun purchases just because these laws can, uh, yes, change the laws? I think so. I think it's gonna be. I mean, it may not be a huge uh spike in profits or whatever, and people going out and purchasing guns, but I think there's it's gonna have some type of impact when it comes to, like I said, uh, the manufacturers being able to sell more guns. It's like now. Yeah. I can just go out and purchase. I can just go to the store, Walmart, or to a gun shop or whatever the case may be and purchase a gun. I don't have to worry about having to pay extra fees to get a permit, you know, do all this other bull crap. Well, i tell you one thing. These niggas around here where I live, they kill a nigga every day. And every day, somebody getting female shooting, niggas shooting, everybody. Mm. So... It's just gonna be some more shooting. It's gonna gonna be a hot summer this summer. It's definitely gonna be a hot summer this summer. That's for sure. That is for Fire. sure. And I was thinking about too with the whole um, you know gun laws is that like the United States themselves, we have a lot of mass shootings, especially amongst young teens, high schools. We hear about middle school students bringing guns and, you know, shooting up the classrooms. In some cases, elementary schools, um, <clears throat> students as well. And I'm like, why would they Why would they pass? It, it has to be some type of effect on maybe population control and a financial reason as to why, you know, all of these states are now trying to pass this, this law, this gun law. I'm like, damn, one COVID population control. <laughs> I'm like, is that many folks right here? They just try to, all the population control they can. Hey, they trying well, to kill this nigga off. Right. Well, maybe, maybe COVID, you know, maybe they're looking at the st- statistics of COVID and maybe not enough people passed away. <laughs> <laughs> they might be looking at it as not enough people passed away due to COVID. We need to. We need to cut the population shorter, and let's come up with some type of grand scheme. You know how to amp it up, get these niggas some guns, and they ain't got to get no permit. Right. So now they need to change that federal law where if you had a a, a felony, you ain't going to get five years. If they take that off the book, well, you know something for them. Oh, Wow. Right now, if you're a felon and get caught with a gun, you get an automatic five years. So, mm. if one day that go away, you know something going on. Well, I don't, I don't think that'll go away. If anything, they will probably move it to ten years or fifteen. They'll increase, they'll increase the number of years you have to serve. Because, like you said, I mean, that's like I said, getting caught with a gun, boy, you cruel for these brothers. I think that's what I'm saying. It sounds like a setup, man. You need to right your face is far away from the phone you sound a little muffled but yeah i think it's all a setup for sure um i don't know i'm gonna ha- i'm i'm gonna keep paying attention to this thing 
and how it pans out. Some something's definitely fishy, fishy, fishy going on. Um, so do they got that same law in New York? Well, you know, in New York, you don't supposed to carry guns at all, whether they con- concealed or not concealed. From my understanding, they you just you can't carry guns at all in New York. So you don't supposed to have no guns in New York. None, but they still do. I mean, but you know the streets, oh, yeah. <clears throat> the streets still. But yeah, you you get you get some some serious time put on you if you get caught with a with a gun. In New York. Unless you're Lil Wayne. No. What you mean? Lil Wayne had to go to, he, he, I mean, but he's a celebrity. Oh my God. Do I need to become a celebrity? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Celebrity, you have to have some coins. You have to have some real live coins. I want a TI pass. And he probably had, <laughs> he had, you know, the right connections, the right attorneys that helped him get that sentence, you know? He had God, Jesus. Just like T.I. had the right attorneys to help him get his gear for, for you know. Twice. Twice. And a two times in a row. Right. And he <laughs> and he's still out here defending himself against that because people swear, you know. Yeah, yeah. They swear up and down. That? that man then snitched he on somebody. To. Hey, I don't know who, but nigga, that shit don't work like that. Man, that man got his, how many years he had? A year plus his, uh, what's that other thing people always talk about? He had to do that Crime Stoppers commercial here in Atlanta. Well, that was part, that was part of his, you know. That was the first time he got out. But then he did it again. The same thing in less than a year, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. gotta teach these niggas some lessons. He still don't he still think he the shit. He the king of the South. <laughs> they should have taught his ass a lesson. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, but let him oh, like, you know. Man, his shit don't stink. Let him he tell it, man. He just had good attorneys. Man, you tell you a fucking snitch, nigga. Who he snitch on? I don't know. I remember he had um you know, before him and his wife got caught up in all that scandal shit, he was doing his own podcast. Um, what was it called? Expeditiously. And he actually had his, I guess, his lead main attorney um, to discuss that particular case online because people always seem every seem like every year, or every six months, someone always online on the Internet brings it up. You know what I mean? The fact that he may have snitching, questioning why he only got sh- such a short, you know, and that was short fizz. sentence. And that was Fizz. You're right. Oof. T.I. Tip. Hey, Tip finessed his way out of that. I mean, ain't no telling what Tip had to do outside of. It could have been some kickback even outside of the attorneys. You know, maybe maybe they had connections with whoever the judge was and. That got a part of the reason why he act the way he act to this day. That shit though. Exactly. That's he already had a short man complex, and this <laughs> this just it, it helped amplify it. Uh, yeah, this put a couple of inches on him, even <laughs> if he didn't grow. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like uh, what's what's the who the other one now with the short man complex? Oh, uh. The baby. The no, oh, the baby. baby. Oh. <laughs> he he he's somebody else that feel as though they above the law. Oh. Uh, yeah, they're gonna have to start goddamn putting it to some of these niggas ass. Yeah. It may come back on them. I oh, mean yeah, I... I keep on letting some of these niggas get away with this shit. It, it ain't had a worse monster than they already is. Right. You exactly right about that. So speaking of hip hop, um, I don't know. This has kind of been like, you know, Twitter in the Twitter space, YouTube space, Instagram space. The whole slaughterhouse breakup between Joe Button, Royce the Five Nine, um, Joel L. Ortiz, and Crooked Eye, 
It was a whole big thing this past a whole, week. A whole bunch of whole shit. A whole bunch of <laughs> whole yeah. You know Joe Button ain't nothing but a hoe. I like <laughs> Joe crazy still. He keeps up some shit though. He keep it up. He keep it name in the news. If he don't do nothing else. Joe know how to keep his name in the news. And the way he explained his size of the shit, boy, he gonna make he gonna try to make you feel like you ain't shit too. Right. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the rap group Slaughterhouse, um they are hip hop, you know, hip hop group. All of them are great, very great MCs. Um, and they were um the group itself was once signed under Eminem Shady Records. And um, they, I think they may have dropped maybe one, maybe one or two albums at the most under Shady Records, but they kind of just went, you know, quiet for a number, a number of years. And during this time, Joe Button and Royce, they kind of continued to live their lives. Um, Royce still dropped his own album, still maintained you know, his his stature in the hip-hop game as far as, like, you know, being on that list of uh, the hottest MCs and Joe Budden, you know, he made his way to reality TV and um, then he started his podcast, which, you know, he probably has maybe the number one uh, or number one or number two um, top, I guess, culture-based podcast. Um, so they've been really doing good for themselves. And, you know, Joe Budden has always been the one that kind of whose personality kind of shined the most out of the all four of them. And he's continued to prosper, you know, whether it's in the news for bad things or good things. He seemed to always be in the news. So recently, recently, Joel Ortiz and Crooked Eye, they devised their own plan to kind of break away from the group. Now, I believe a year ago, year and a half ago, Slaughterhouse themselves as a group um, was able to fully get off of Shady Records and retain, you know, retain their um, likeness, retain the name of the group. So there is some legal, you know, legalities when it comes to Slaughterhouse as a as a collective um, but even when they got off of Slaughterhouse, I believe Joel and Crooked Eye also thought that, hey, okay, now we're free. Now we can go out and start searching for these other deals, you know, see what's on the table. And it seems like as Joe Button and Royce kind of still continue to do their own thing, Crooked Eye was the one that actually, um, <laughs> Crooked Eye was the one that actually, um, Hello? Yeah. Tell me. Oh, my God. I'm in the middle of a podcast, man. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a live podcast, and this fool, Head, if y'all don't remember, <laughs> Head was one I used to do the YouTube videos with, and I had AG on the other line. I made a mistake and clicked AG off. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Let me Head see. Oh my God! I hope he called back. I hope he realized he is no longer on the line. Hold on. Let me see if I can Go get ahead, him. Call I just called you. I ain't, I ain't want that. Oh my God! This is so crazy. Oh my God! Yo, what's up, man? My bad. My bad. My bad. You did. This is a this is a flumber on live, you guys. <laughs> that damn head, I tell you, y'all Alabama Negroes get on my nerves. Y'all always doing stuff at the wrong time. He called me, and I'm sitting here talking to him, and he just laughing, and I'm like, oh my god, I'd have clicked AG off. Oh, god. I didn't know what the hell happened. I'm like, man, finish that. She must don't know. I do. Right. I'm just talking, and then I see head number pop up, and I click something, and I'm just talking, and all of a sudden I hear him laughing in the background. I'm like, head? I was supposed to be talking to you? Damn, fool. 
Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> back to the slaughterhouse thing. So let me just speed that part up. So anyway, so yeah, so slaughterhouse, um, Crooked Eye was going out, you know, presenting these possible deals um, that he, I guess, worked with somebody on. Um, but it seems like he, he, his complaint was that he could never really get in touch with, especially Joe, since Joe is somewhat of the, the person with the most clout, I guess you could say, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a headliner. He's the headliner kind of out of the group. So Crooked Eye basically say he couldn't really get, you know, the discussions that he was trying to have with Joe, Joe always would shoot him down like, nah, I want, you know, that deal, you know, and listening to Joe Button, I can understand his his point of view as well. Joe is at a a a, a, a spot in his life where Joe has been sitting at tables for millions, meaning contracts have been put in front of him, whether it's, with, you know, when they was with Spotify for the podcast. But so he's 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 used to seeing, you know, big dollars and being able to kind of negotiate, you know, what's right for him. And at, at the end of the day, each of them need to whatever the contracts that they are looking at need to negotiate based on what is going to be cool for them and their livelihood and their family and their, you know what I mean? Their generational wealth and not just hop on the first deal that's brought to the table. So I understand Joe's perspective on that. And I feel as though one of the things that Royce and Joe button was online, they was on IG live talking about it. Joe even spoke a little bit about it on his um, Joe button uh, podcast as well, is that they felt disrespected because Joel and crooked eye, they have basically just took the slaughterhouse name as a whole, the logo. They done made song. They got this album coming out. They've made some deal with some, some guy on the side. Um, we, no one knows how much that deal was worth, um, but they've put out a video now, and the video is shown where they are taking the Slaughterhouse logo and the merchandise and basically burning it up. So they felt very, very disrespected, and Joel Ortiz got on the um, IG Live with Royce and Joe Button the other day, and, and Joe basically told the dude to suck his Suck his dick if suck my dick if I got to tell a motherfucker help you promote your album. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, this, this motherfucker just tell me he I got to promote his album just to be down with him. Right. Suck my dick. <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> that nigga show would be crazy, <laughs> man. Yeah, to see the face. Yeah, yeah. He looked like <laughs> crazy. That was so hilarious because I was looking at it, the video on YouTube, but I'm like, I said, the dude was like, man, you're going to check out the album, man. You can support the no, album. He said, yeah, you got to tell people to support it. I'm not telling yeah, nobody, nobody to support it. it. Yeah, he's like, like, suck my dick. <laughs> 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 that motherfucker got man. He had to get up. It might be Slaughterhouse, might be over with for real after that. I mean, they are. <laughs> It's I mean it's over with the way the way Joe and Royce and even um Crooked Eye I'll say Joel is the only one out the group that's still kind of trying to be as neutral you know to both kind of sides with everybody but Crooked Eye Crooked Eye already said he don't give a a a, a fuck yeah. about them no more he just going on so at this point it might end up being a legal thing. It, I wouldn't be surprised if Joe and Royce end up maybe taking Cro Crooked Eye and Joel, you know, to court, suing them for Cause using the, the Slaughterhouse name. Because the song about them, though, ain't it? Not even that. I'm just talking yeah. about Slaughterhouse, that brand in itself. It's a brand. They have a following for Slaughterhouse. It's money so to be made yeah. using the Slaughterhouse name. Right. And now that you know, Crooked Eye and Joel are trying to use it and capitalize off of it on their own. Joe and Royce do have the they, ability they to go. 25% of peace in there. So right, exactly. Exactly. So they might they might take it to court and maybe put some type of. You might promote the album if I'm Joe Budden. If I got an invested interest in it, shit, I get 25%. Oh, the sales, nigga. Yeah, but at the end of the day, 
there is no slaughterhouse with just two people. Slaughterhouse is a collective. Oh, yeah, they the fans want to see all four. The fans do not want to hear just two. I don't think the fans want to hear all four. <laughs> the fans, the, the 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 yes, they do. These are day one fans that's been with them since the Shady Records days, and they want to hear all four. All yeah, all four of them can can rap now. When it comes to like that hardcore New York East Coast type MC, they definitely all four can rap, and I think that. Yeah, I just think that the fans, they're doing a disservice to the fans um, with this whole... They're trying to get the fans something, because from what I got out of it, Joe Budden and um, and, um, and Royce, they ain't trying to do no rapping no more. They're like, we rapped already. You know uh, what I'm saying? We, we really ain't no rappers no more. We doing other shit. No, Ro- Royce is still a rapper. Now, Royce, he rap- Royce raps. That's that's pretty much what he do now. He might do production and stuff like that too, um, but like I said, all of them throughout the years have put out their own projects and stuff. And you know, Royce ain't never really been to. You know, Royce and Eminem are best friends. They're best friends. Yeah. So he kind of always kind of been straight. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure maybe Eminem might have make sure financially he's always been straight. Um, but you know. Joe is, you know, Joe, you know, Joe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they straight. Joe, if it's, they straight. Mm-hmm. It's like the mother motherfuckers, they ain't straight like they, like they want to be, like the mother two. Yeah, the mother two motherfuckers, like, I'm straight, man. We really ain't got to do this. <laughs> right. And these other two motherfuckers, they still want to do it, but they don't want to change the name. Use another label. I mean, that's what Joe them like, don't use our name. You come up with a new name if that's what y'all want to do. Right. Yeah. You right about that. Now, what make what came up to mind when I was thinking about Slaughterhouse? <clears throat> and I think I'm probably gonna lab- label this uh title this episode as Slaughter Foes. I was thinking about one of my favorite Southern rap groups, A Baller MJG. They had a song called Friend of Foe. And I just think it just really applied to this situation because all these gentlemen were friends. They've, you know, they've kind of they've had to rough it out, you know, for years, been on the road, probably doing a show of a hundred people, you know, from a hundred people to thousands of people. So they kind of, you know, they they got it out the mud basically with each right. other and to end up in this place like I said I think it's definitely a disservice um but at the end of the day everybody want to eat right everybody want to eat and and that's kind of what it's all about you know these days people trying to get money people got families to take care of um so I understand what Crooked and Joel kind of wanting to keep pressing on and doing what they got to do instead of having to Wait, wait until Joe and Royce decide, hey, we want to participate in this thing. They, you know, Crooked and, and Joel, they need to make some money, too. They, you know, they they don't have the spotlight like Joe does and have well, the, need, the money like they, he does. They need to come up with them a name then. <laughs> Leave that other name alone. <laughs> exactly. Very simple. Right, right. But it's, it's a shame when friends kind of end up in this, uh, end up in this uh, situation. So, you know, they went from friends to slaughter foes. I tell you the truth. They and they, still got love for one another. I mean, I'm sure deep down inside they do. And hopefully they do. Uh, maybe in the next 10, 10, 15 years, maybe they can come together and on one accord and um, put out a collective, you know, piece of musical artwork so people can, you know, so so their fans can have something, at least one last, you know, hoorah with all of them um, together. But <clears throat> that's going to end today's episode, you guys. Um, we will be back next week. And, you know, as we do, um, we want you guys to definitely continue to uh, – Listen. Listen. 
um, follow, follow <laughs> subscribe, like, like comment <laughs> on all streaming platforms, um, social media platforms as well. You can follow us at STR8 um fwd msb um like i said on all platforms also if you are a business owner um or you know you might be an artist as well or have a project or something that you're working on that you would like advertising for you would like to advertise during our podcast episodes definitely you can email us at str the number eight fwd uh, media at gmail.com that's straightforward media at gmail.com and um yeah send your inquiries there until next time say bye-bye ag peace and so